Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to episode 31 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. This week, we're going to be talking about a brand new update for Amiga OS 3.1.4 called Amiga OS 3.1.4.1. The guys have been hard at work in fixing some more bugs that were found in Amiga OS 3.1.4. This has come as kind of a surprise considering the ongoing lawsuit between uh, the new owners of the Amiga copyrights and Hyperion, but Hyperion is going ahead and continuing to update the software. Now, while I was looking at Hyperion's website and downloading the new update, I noticed this other interesting little tidbit. Let me show you. So if you notice here, on their website, they're talking about the update to Amiga OS 3.1.4 has been released. Fantastic. Couple little details that I'll go over, but look over here. Full acquisition of the Reaction GUI Toolkit. Now Reaction is what Amiga OS 3.5 and 3.9 used to update the Amiga OS operating system back in late 99 and early 2000 to a much, much more modern way. Reaction's beautiful. It allowed us to use things like the, the little Amy doc that you see on some of my videos uh, where I've installed Amiga OS 3.1.4 over Amiga OS 3.9 in order to keep this reaction interface. Well, as of May 14th, 2019, Hyperion now owns Reaction which means I think they're going to implement that again in Amiga OS 3.1.4 and make our multimedia capabilities on our 68K Amigas even better. This is exciting news. So what does this new update to Amiga OS 3.1.4 do? Well, first of all, it squishes some bugs that were out there. The devs have mentioned that there are some programs that did not play nice with the original Amiga OS and used some little hacks and tricks to work. And those programs broke on the new version of the operating system. So they've gone in and, and done some patching to get some of these older programs to work properly on Amiga OS 3.1.4. Kudos to that. They've also released a new version of Fast File System, which I'm going to walk you through step by step how to install. This is a good thing. They keep updating Amiga's fast file system, and now it's at a point where it's really not too bad. I know there will always be, be people who say, use PFS instead, but FFS is really getting pretty good. I'm impressed. They've done some more updates to the Intuition Library, that little thing that lets us move our windows off the screen. They've put some patches onto that. They fixed set patch a little bit, so it patches audio device and this thing called shell-seg. They fix that so that updates properly. And they've done a lot of work to HD Toolbox to make it more realistically see the capacity of your drive and, and look at the structure and be more realistic about what that is. That's a good thing. If you use CrossDOS, which is also included with the Amiga OS, to look at your hard drives or your floppies or whatnot that were created on a Microsoft operating system, the new CrossDOS is more tolerant of file structures and it's going to work better for you too. All in all, a good thing. They've patched some Amiga OS commands. They've patched the shell. They fixed Disk Doctor to work a little bit better. All good little things, nice things that they patched. Now, this is available directly from Hyperion in their download sections if you have an account on their website and you've purchased the Amiga OS 3.1.4. Just log in. It'll download as a zip file, which in theory you should be able to decompress OK on your Amiga. But you can also do what I did, which is download it on my PC and then take that ADF file, put it on a compact flash and bring it over to my Amigas that way. Let me show you how to make the ADF file into an actual disk. 
once you copy the ADF file over to your Amiga. In my case, I put it on my CF card that plugs into the auxiliary port on my ACA 500 plus. You can take a look. I'm going to go to my directory. I put it in this folder, Amiga OS 3.1.4.1 update. And you can see it just comes as a standard ADF file. Now, in order to make this install on your computer, there's two things you could do. Number one, if you've got a real floppy disk, uh, they're getting a little harder to find, you can use some of the tools that come with Best Workbench, which is a utility uh, that you can install that I went over a couple of videos ago. In that case, we would go to our best workbench here, our utilities, TS GUI, which comes with it. You can tell it which floppy to put it on. In my case, I'm choosing the floppy DF1 here. I've got it in my external drive. And then you tell it which file to bring over and make a floppy out of. And in this case, I'm going to look on my auxiliary disk, Amiga OS, and you click on file to disk. All data on the disk will be discarded. Great. Click OK and it will make the disk. So now that that's completed, you see we've got this nice little update floppy here. Double click it and it will have our standard installer. Choose your language to install it as, and it will crank away and do its thing. This program updates hard drive installations of Amiga Operating System 3.1.4 to release 3.1.4.1. So we're going to proceed. I, I'm going to choose a intermediate user here. Proceed with install, install for real. And it tells us what disk it's going to install it on, the workbench partition, and the languages. You can change your languages here too, of course. We're going to let it do its thing. Now you'll notice that the files it's copying over have a .z at the end. That is because all of the files on the floppy disk are compressed and it's decompressing them as it's copying them over. So you won't be able to just take the raw files from the floppy and put them in the proper directories. Let the installer do the job or you will have to manually decompress them when you bring them over. Okay, now we've finished installing them. We're going to go ahead and reboot the Amiga. And here's what we have to do next. The critical thing is to update the file system using HD Toolbox. We're going to go back into our workbench partition, go to Tools, and launch HD Toolbox. This is a slightly newer version. Now, if you have something besides devices on SCSI device, you're going to have to do this to tell it where to look. Let's exit out of here right-click, left-click HD Toolbox, right-click and choose Information. And you'll see SCSI device name equals SCSI device. If you're using a different device, like in my case, in my Amiga 4000, it's WarpEngine.device, you go in here and you just change the name SCSI device to the name of your disk controller. Warp Engine device, uh, Blizzard device, whatever it is you're using, in order for HD Toolbox to properly see your drives. So we'll go back into here since this Amiga is just using SCSI device. And it sees 
everything just fine here. We're going to click on Partition Drive, Advanced Options. Now, we, in order to update the file system, you have to click on one of your partitions, click on Add Update, and you'll see right now we're at 45.16. Click Update File System. It will look in the default location which should be L colon fast file system where it copied the new one version 46.2 click OK see now our version number is has been incremented here click OK again now if we click on our second partition add update you'll see it's already updated it for both partitions so you should be just fine there if you have multiple physical drives in your Amiga you'll have to do this for each physical drive the other thing is make sure this is checked, direct SCSI transfer. Sometimes that gets unchecked when you do this. You want to make sure that that's checked. Now this next thing will scare the pants off of you. We're going to save changes to drive. And when we exit, we're going to have to reboot. Well, it didn't do it on this one. On my Amiga 1200, the first thing it said is, you've made changes to your drive. It's going to delete your drive and it doesn't. So if it comes up and it warns you that it's going to delete the contents of your hard drive, it doesn't do it. You're able to safely bypass that. Interesting how it didn't do it on my Amiga 500. She's booted right back up. We now have our new workbench version up here. Copyright 2019 Hyperion Entertainment developed under license. That's debatable. And now you're able to use this floppy disk to update all of your installations of Amiga OS 3.1.4. You're not limited to just using it on just your Amiga 500 or your 1200 or whatever. This part of the update is global. Now a lot of these changes are going to be just under the hood changes. You're not going to notice a huge difference except a little bit more stability, maybe a tiny bit more speed in some applications, but I'm very pleased that Hyperion is taking the initiative and they're having their people, well, they're having the people who developed Amiga OS 3.1.4 continue to update it. I also think that this new reaction that they now own is going to be folded into Amiga OS 3.1.4 and it's going to make a very 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 nice update once they get reaction working properly with it i really enjoy using the reaction interface on my amiga 4000 it's wonderful i intentionally don't do it on my amiga 500 and my amiga 1200 that's a, just a, a raw installation of amiga os 3.1.4 just so i have the experience of of both sides of things now there's still the issue of the legal dispute between hyperion and uh, Michael, who owns the assets for Amiga at this point in time. Hyperion is moving forward, developing products, supporting the community. I applaud them for that. Michael, even though there was a new video released by, by Stephen a couple of months back, an interview with him, that revealed almost nothing. It was an hour-long video that gave us almost no new information. Amiga.com is still down. There have been no official announcements of anything, no development of, of new software, no discussions of new software. I applaud Hyperion for doing what they're doing. I'm going to have to tell Michael, you have to do something. You have to communicate with us. You have to let us know what you're doing with the Amiga, or we're all going to look at Hyperion and say, Look, they're the ones who are moving forward. You've got to do something. That's a personal opinion. But until next time, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, signing out.